Roman Reigns is still your UE champion. The Uwu champion. Uwu champion. Drew McIntyre cruelly defeated, heartbreaking, in front of his hometown of Cardiff, Britain. Devastating stuff. But was it a mistake? I think we both have different sides of opinion here. I'm Ollie Davis. I'm joined by Luke Owen, DAD. Please press the thumbs up button. Give us a subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you're watching on demand. And of course, get in those ultra chats to wrestletalk.com forward slash support. We'll read out every single one of them over five US dollars before the end of the show. And also a very big thank you to our sponsor for this Clash at the Castle weekend. Beer 52? Beer52.com forward slash wrestle talk. Get yourself not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, but eight free craft beers on us. All you got to do is pay for that sweet ass postage and mm. packaging. And it seems fitting that it's Beer52 sponsoring not only our live reactions last night and this podcast as well, because it's UK viewers only. And this was a <laughs> show designed for us UK viewers. Oh, it's so nice. I don't feel like crap today. Well, I do a little. I'm a bit hungover, but... I got to bed at a, a reasonable hour. Yeah, wasn't half too bad. Half 12. I got to bed at half two because I continued drinking after uh, the, the me, me, Laurie, Terry, Adam, partners, and some of the SWAF nation that came along to uh, to the Joiner on Worship in Shoreditch to watch Class of the Castle with us went to a, a cocktail bar. Um, oh, how, how sophisticated. It, it, well, it was a cocktail bar slash club. Yes. And it was so loud in there is it a kind of cocktail nightclub where you you know like if you go to a nice cocktail bar they make the things in front of you and they give you a little napkin and they put your drink there but sometimes it, if if they serve mojitos in pitchers that's generally not the vibe we i think were the only group in there that was not a hen do <laughs> Or a stag do. That's sort of the vibe I got. You're a wrestling do. And like, it was so dark and dingy in there, but they had loads of lampshades, mm -hmm. like above the bar. And they would play songs, like they would play like Stacy's Mum. And then all of the bar staff would swing the lampshades. So they would go like back and forth and this and crazy and that and the other. And you can tell how like old. Conformist. Well, how much of a dad I am at this point. Because my first thought was, I'm going to have someone's eye out doing that. <laughs> That's very dangerous. Terry. And then one of the bar staff got up onto the bar, started taking his shirt off and started doing a little strip tease dance to one the of the hell? songs. Like, it's Coyote Ugly. Laurie was less than impressed with this man. Well, Laurie's less than impressed with most things. <laughs> uh, wow, I didn't know that was the debauchery you got up to after a yeah, so, little party. Uh, I checked into my travel lodge hotel mm -hmm. at half past two. I'm surprised they let you in. Yeah, well, you know, they, they had to. I paid. Yeah. Did you uh, vend the machine pack of the crisps? No, I just went upstairs. We I watched. Just need food. <laughs> we. Yeah, I went I... upstairs. We watched an episode of Diners, Drive-ins, and Dives, and I fell asleep. Nice. Yeah, it's always tough. It's uh, porn stars with or, or hardcore porn is usually my hotel viewing. Not naughty stuff, but you know where people are on hard times and <laughs> they get exploited by by big American pawn shops. I, I said this to my wife this morning because we watched another episode of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. I said, this is what hotel telly is. Mm. I watched this, flick it over to ITVB, and watched Masters of Flip. Great stuff. About two people who flip houses. Not really. They basically just buy a plot of land and then build a new house. But last night's episode of WWE... <laughs> was much, much better. It was uh, it was such a joy to not only watch the show, because I think the show in itself, you know, all three hours, 25 minutes of that show, because that's where the show ended, was was fantastic. Great matches. A lot of, no titles changed hands. I think in retrospect, I'm like, oh, it's Super Showdown. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the Australian, Australian one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Where was that? But I think even they got a title change. Didn't Buddy Murphy win? Oh, I, th I mean, he was probably on the card. I, I would well, have no, thought. It was a big one. Buddy Murphy beat. Do you want me to go to Wikipedia and I check? I do it first. Uh, but yeah, this this did feel like a really big event. And uh, what a beautiful six match card it was. This felt like a real window into what we could expect from the Triple H era of pay per views. It was really, really delightful. And top to bottom, yeah, apparently he beat Cedric. Uh, yeah, he won the cru cruiserweight title, and weren't the iconics on this as well? Yeah, but I think this might be pre-tag titles, wasn't it? They defeated Asuka and Naomi, though. 
Cool. Asuka and Naomi. Yeah. <laughs> What's Naomi doing at any point in her WWE? She's probably in a yeah. random tank. <laughs> or feuding with Sonya Deville. <laughs> uh, but I thought, top to bottom, this show was awesome. Not every match was a like big five-star classic. Like, you know, Liv and Shayna was what it was. I thought the tag match was what it was. Um, but, like, I think really, like, the big matches massively delivered. This main event was in freaking credible it's the most fun i've had mm. at a wrestling event in quite some time maybe that's because we had you know 200 odd people watching it with us in the joiner and worship but i had such a good time with it i was so madly invested i so wanted to see drew win i loved everything about this show but yet when i spoke to every single one of those people that have bought a ticket to come and watch the show with us every single one of them said that ending was crap though, wasn't it? So it was a really bad ending. And like everyone was riding on such a high that all people could talk about was that stuff with Tyson Fury was well weird though, wasn't it? It is how you leave them. And the impression that a lot of people left with was what was that final five, ten minutes? And it, it is important though to point out what we mean by the ending of the show because a lot of people are very down on the fact that Drew lost. And that, so I think, objectively, the 10 minutes of Drew and Tyson Fury doing a sing-song in the ring was bad. It's hot garbage, I would say. That was a mistake. I'm pretty sure they just accidentally left the, the broadcast up. It didn't get over with the live crowd either. Because this live crowd went there thinking they were going to see, you know, home nation hero mm. Drew win the belt. And they didn't. And what they got was Tyson Fury shaking hands with Roman Reigns and then shaking hands with Drew McIntyre and be like, yeah, you're all right. You like, you just shook hands with the baddie that yeah. just cheated you out of the belt. It was like, fair play, lads. You put on an excellent fight. And it just, it makes Tyson feel like this, oh, now this wrestling is legitimized because uh, an actual boxer sports person has endorsed both men i'm like no but that takes me out of it i want to think wrestling is better than box and is better than all these other things and i was waiting for the angle mm. i was waiting for drew to claim more tyson fury or for the pair of them to roll austin theory back in and they claim more him or knock him out or something like that I was waiting for an angle and there was no angle Tyson Fury sang, for a long time, <laughs> American Pie, which apparently is something he does in all of his boxing It's his things. thing. It's, his, it's thing. his thing. And then Drew sang, Don't Look Back in Anger. Sang one chorus of Don't Look Back in Anger by Oasis. Tempest informed me it's his two, one, one of two favorite bands. It's Oasis? Oasis and Guns N' Roses are apparently his two favorite Tempest bands. Tempest's favorite bands. No, Drew's. Oh, right. Um, he doesn't know who Oasis oh, yeah, are. They never broke America. Uh, or Canada. But, um, like, he... And they just sort of sang this song. And the crowd were like, yeah, you know, mm. we like singing Don't Look Back in Anger. So, yeah, we'll sing this for a bit. Also waiting for an angle to happen. And the show ended. Well, when he started singing Don't Look Back in Anger, which is a terrific song, Americans, you one should of, listen to Oasis. One of the all-time great songs. I, I was like, oh, he's singing this because he's going to do Don't Look Back in Anger. I heard you say Tyson's celebrating. He's looking the other way. He looks back in anger. And that's when he hits the Claymore on Fury. I was like, oh, what a great way to turn this sing song into an angle. Flash up the copyright logo, but then boom, Claymore to the face. Because they've done so many interviews, the pair of them saying they want to work a match together. Yeah, and they I did I have this. no idea why, but apparently they well, want it. It would, be, it would be a huge, huge sort of crossover deal. I think they're trying to capture the Mike Tyson stuff, surely. He's got very similar names. But like, but it's not. Clearly hasn't worked, because this is not the first time we've had Tyson Fury in WWE, and it added net zero to any of the product. So I don't know if like adding Fury to anything is going to really... But it's not going to be a Tyson-level no. elevation. But I th So what I think they were trying to do, rather cynically, by having this at the end of the show, is if they got everyone singing along, it would take off and be shared and... BBC News and ESPN, they'd all play clips of what happened at the end of the wrestling show. Wow, WWE, great publicity. Oh, I didn't. It was like you. It was like your dad trying to be cool. It was. It was pulling teeth a little mm. bit, and it really was. Like it, it was a cynical send the crowd home happy because we've just 
given the crowd the opposite of what they wanted. So we'll send them home happy with a little sing song, and that'll mean they'll come back the next time for for the next time we do one of these shows in thirty years in time. Thirty years. So that's that's bad. I Was think bad. everyone's agreed that's bad. But I'm just going to pretend that part because that was the only bad thing on the entire show for me. But there has been some disagreement over the main event. So Drew and Roman had an excellent match. The story was that all of Roman's bloodline cronies, the Usos and Sami Zayn, have been taken out already by Drew. Paul Heyman have been taken out. Do you still sell in the SummerSlam uh, announcers table spot? So there's no one for Roman. It's just Drew versus Reigns. And they have just just terrific main event style match. So so great. And like the first the first third was Roman doing a lot of like oh he one upped me walk around outside excellent stalling heel work. Then they start to trade the stuff back and forth, and then it just went into overdrive in the final few minutes where Austin Theory ran down. No, what happened first? Carrying Cross was first. Carrying Cross was sitting front row. A uh, little bit of an interaction there. He threw a bottle of water at Drew. Mm-hmm. And this is actually what I think is the most genius thing about this match. Because the match, like the work rate was impeccable mm. anyway. The character work was so, so great from both of them. But I think the real genius of this match is the red herrings. So yes. they set up carrying Cross at ringside with Scarlet, who was in a storyline with Drew. And he throws a bottle of water at Drew McIntyre. So you think, oh, okay, maybe he's going to get involved in the finish. And then Austin Theory runs down with the money in the bank. And you're like, okay, maybe he's going to be setting up for the finish. Tyson Fury stops Austin Theory from cashing in. So you're like, okay, maybe he's going to be part of the finish. All of these red herrings were designed Mm. to distract you from the fact that they called up Sola Sokoa from NXT to be the third Uso (laughs) and drag out the referee after the Claymore finish. It was a genius bit of match layout planning and booking because no one saw Sola Sokoa coming because there'd been so much pomp and circumstance around Mm -hmm. leading up to it. It's one of the best near falls I've ever seen. It was incredible. So I think Roman got the chair. He's going to use the chair behind the referee's back, turns around, drew claymores in. We are all like everyone in the pub was just like, it's over. That's it. One, two. And then the the guy, I can't remember his name. He was a Scottish guy in front of me turned around and just started celebrating i was like no <laughs> it's not happened because he just he it was we like 2.999 thought. i think i'm safe to turn around and celebrate we now. all thought yeah. there's actually an amazing near fall prior prior to that off to the second spear mm. and drew kicked out that second spear like at 2.99999 yeah, yeah. me and tempest were like me were doing the live reaction at that point we're like i thought that was the finish i really thought that was the finish there but when he hit that claymore and he had Roman down one, two, three. I was like, this is it. I've jammed in my jam in the jar. I'm about to become the champion. And in Solar Sokoa debuts, I was so, like, I could not fathom what had happened. I don't think you can actually hear this in the live reactions. I didn't know what who it was. I just saw a beard and I shouted, it's Braun Strowman! <laughs> <laughs> that would have been bad. I didn't know what was going on. I was like, oh no, it's Solo Sokoa. That actually yeah. makes way more sense. Yeah, because if it was just another random return, yeah. uh, you know, Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt, chuck a name in there. It's just like, oh, okay, well, that's that's a surprise for a surprise sake. But Solo Sokoa being called up, being revealed as the third Uso, it just, this is why I don't mind Drew losing. I think, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say people are wrong. But I think it's important to differentiate heartbreak from like what is a creatively good direction. I was just destroyed. I was devastated by Drew losing everyone in that pub. We had took the wind out of everyone's sails. We had our lady partners there in the like the lady partner section, (laughs) and it was a VIP section. We didn't just uh, segregate them out. They they were lifted up on a little like uh, bad news Barrett thing, (laughs) and everyone would look at them. And go. What do you think? And they said they like they told me afterwards. They were like, we didn't know what was happening, but we were really we like knew something big was happening. We we re- like we really enjoyed the back and forths and stuff. They got really wrapped up in like because it was an incredible atmosphere mm. in the pub for it, <laughs> like an insane atmosphere. Yeah. And yeah, they just got really really wrapped up in it. So I, you're right. Like you do have to differentiate between. I'm gutted that Drew didn't win versus 
I think it is creatively bad that Drew didn't win. And the reason why I think I sort I, I side on one half of it, depending on what the follow up to this is, because the other part of the post match stuff, all the Tyson Fury stuff, was Drew McIntyre saying, mm. "I am going to win the undisputed WWE Universal Championship." And because they had Solo Sokoa cost him the match, that would suggest we are going to continue Drew versus Roman and the Bloodline, and we'll get Drew versus Roman at the next pay per view or like down the line. So that with a stip at extreme with rules. a stip at extreme rules, <laughs> like Roman's going to work extreme rules. Like you know, it's a hell in a cell, whatever. Like mm. so, no one can get in, and you know, it's it's Drew and it's only Roman, which then offers up two options: either Drew loses again. And Roman just carries on his run, presumably towards either The Rock or Cody Rhodes, whichever direction we are going to be going down, or Drew wins the belt. And that raises the point of, like, if Drew's going to win the belt, why didn't you do it mm. here when it would have been the better? Because you've only had one shot at this. You only get one opportunity to have Drew win the belt in that location, and you didn't do it there. So, like, come the next, if they have another pay per view, he can't win. Because if they wins there, that is an incredibly terrible decision. Had to have been this night or it's no night. It's like The Fiend should have won at Hell in a Cell, not the following like month or three weeks like, later. It was in Saudi, a Saudi Arabia yeah, exactly, show. Yeah. Like, the moment has passed. I totally agree there. Um, <coughs> maybe I, I really hope they don't just do Roman and Drew again. Like that, Hopefully that is a sign of the past era. And if you do come back to it, you come back to it a lot further down the line. Um what about a carrying cross Roman Drew three way? Even so, like it's yeah. What I mean, about Cross versus McIntyre as a number one contenders match to face Roman? Like I mean, that's all that's grand and everything. But if the if the end result is still Drew versus mm -hmm. Roman, like yeah. you, you've still got your two options of the same same path. But like the great thing that Triple H has done is he set up a lot of things for Drew that are outside of the Roman Reigns thing. So we can go into a feud with Karrion Cross. However, if I'm Drew McIntyre from a character, Karrion Cross is not the reason that I lost that title because he threw a bottle of water at me. Now it's Solo Sokoa. I think like Drew from a character perspective, he's been going after the bloodline mm. because that's the cause of his loss. And if he doesn't do that, you'd be like, why aren't you doing this? You've got to have a good creative reason to get you out of that predicament. Just fantasy book it because I think a lot like... I understand a lot of the anger towards, uh, oh, my, you know, Drew didn't win. It's his time to win. Because, like, back in the day, that would just be on to the next one. And Drew would fade away. Or they'd do it loads and loads of times Three more into times, the ground. Yeah. Um, I think this is a new time. I'm certainly a lot more optimistic. I'm treating WWE largely as a clean slate. So when stuff like this happens, even though I really wanted Drew to win, I'm like, well, I'll see how this goes. Because I actually think adding Sokoa to the bloodline that was a killer angle. It's created enough intrigue. So a bit of fantasy booking. Survivor Series is a few months away. Mm -hmm. Triple H is a man of tradition. Could we be going for a bloodline, you know, rather than Raw versus SmackDown, a bloodline versus... Um, Team Good Guy. Drew, Cross, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. I wouldn't want Karen, because Karen's feuding with Drew. Yeah, but maybe so I don't want them on the set. Like the enemy of get the enemy of my enemy is my friends, and, and that. But that's like the thing that implodes the baby faces. I don't, I don't love. I don't. I like Drew, Kevin, and Sammy. I don't like Cross mm. being in there. Like I think that that doesn't work within there. But like the idea of the bloodline versus a group of good guys or a group of lads isn't actually the worst idea in the world. I think it's actually pretty good. If Braun Strowman's coming back, Chuck and Ziggler, Dogs of War. <laughs> Bring back Heath, 3MB. It's all there. Jinder's right there for the taking. Like, and I, th I think it's very important to point out the title of this episode that we've done for the podcast is Did mm. WWE Botch Roman Reigns? I don't think either of us are saying they have definitively because this really is a case of we'll wait to see what happens Friday. Because Friday when we have SmackDown it's a, and that's the next step of this, That'll be the decision of, like, we can kind of look back on what happened at Clash of the Castle and decide whether or not that was a mistake. So it's very, like, it's, it, I, I think you know, literacy is important here. Did WWE? It's asking the question of whether they did or not. And at this point, I don't know, because I need to see what the follow-up is to this before we can decide whether or not this was the wrong move. I certainly think they botched Drew with that ending. 
Well, yeah, I, mean, I, I thought it made him look like a chump. It, it did make him look like an absolute, like absolute chump. The final shot, every single person that had the exact same comments mm. I was talking to last night was like, final shot should have been Roman and Sokoa <laughs> with the belts. Yeah. That sh and the show goes off the air, and all that stuff with Tyson Fury is just for the in ring, is there for the in audience people. Well, let's see what you all thought on the Ultra Chats. Please get them into wrestletalk.com forward slash support. We'll read out every single one over five US dollars. Dean Trin says, while I'm disappointed that Drew didn't, I also understand the decision. WWE probably don't want to change their title uh, outside of the US, so it's understandable. The match was a banger, though. I don't know if I agree with that. Yeah, I they... don't agree with that. No, I don't think they would. Because they've changed plenty of titles. Outside of, saying, yeah. yeah. Gaz Genga, last night was amazing. The atmosphere at the watch-along, chef's kiss, and as for the after-show party, made up for Drew's broken dreams. La sigh. Some people did say it was like it was written in the stars for you all to see. He, his video package at the start was Broken Dreams. Yeah. And they're going to break all of yours. Normie Legion. Hi, lads. First time Ultra Chat. What fascinates me about that finish is that it's really the only bad part of the whole show. In my opinion, if it had happened at any other event, it would have been great. But this was the wrong time, wrong place to do it. Or yep. the sing-along. Uh, or maybe the, the finish. But I, I actually agree with you, Normie. It really was like the only actively bad thing. Because everything else was either tippity top great or like that was that served a purpose. Yeah. Uh, Aidenator 800. What a fantastic premium live event. Was super bummed when Roman initially beat Drew. But now that I've had a while to process it, I'm now looking forward to Roman actually losing the title even more. Don't know how they'll keep things interesting until Mania, though. Yeah, I think a lot of people now they've slept on it. They're like... Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I like Roman winning. The other side of this is, and we brought this up on uh, the Blackpool Content Club that went up on Friday, is that Roman's not around a lot. Like he's, like, we don't even know if he's going to be part of this episode, this Friday SmackDown. Mm. Like he probably will be because they need to do some Bloodline stuff, but he probably won't be at the next pay per view or the pay per view after that. Like we may not have him on pay per view until Survivor Series. It's just another three months without the belts on TV. And I think some people are now <coughs> sick and tired yeah. of the belts not being on TV. And it is going to be like, if Roman is keeping those belts to Mania, it is going to be a long slog getting there. Because like, Drew, the, last, the last month's been okay. Yeah, but Drew, but that's the point I was going to make was Drew is the first guy since Brian and Edge at last year's WrestleMania that felt like legit contenders mm. that could take the belt off of him. That's 18 months where we've had no one being a credible threat to him until Drew. Well, there is, um, it's the, the, he is the first challenger of the Triple H era. You could say, the, oh, this is the only one we've got a chance for. I see it as Triple H has managed to make one credible contender. Maybe next time. You know, it, and he can keep building up these credible uh, opponents. Maybe. And you've always got theory in the wings. Can I just tell you this there, thing? There is never cash in on Roman. <laughs> Can I just tell you this thing about my lady partner? Mm. So there's the graphic before the show. It's Roman Reigns. He's got two belts, and it says celebrating two years as champion. I said, look, he's been two years as champion to my lady partner. And she went, oh, you get a title for each year. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like. Oh, if only. I was like, what, what do you mean? And she was like, you know, in other sports, like. <laughs> That you win the that year's Premier League, like he did, he win twenty twenty, twenty twenty one. I was like, no, he didn't. But I like this. Yeah, don't don't mind it. I think we should shoot, keep track of everyone's win loss record and find a way to actually award kayfabe the most victories in a year. WrestleTalk.com has all <laughs> of the rankings for WWE and AEW, so we can crown. The winner of wrestling 2022. Yeah, you won wrestling this year. Well done. <laughs> uh, some guy on dark <laughs> who's had like a hundred matches. Homer Star Fan 13. Loved the show, but found the ending to be really deflating. This was the perfect time to take the belt off Roman as the crowd was super behind Drew. Now I can't see who they who can take the belt off him, except for maybe Cody. And if it is Cody, that's not going to be until January. When, and even then, it's probably that's a mm. rumble return, which means it's after January. Homer Star fan continues. Also, with the awful ending segment between Fury and Drew, was I the only one thinking, so the Fiend's going to show up, right? I never I thought Fiend was showing up at this pay per view. Riot DR. Hey, yo. To play Devil's Avocado, when my friends are down, I tend to trigger a sing along to lift their spirits, usually Bohemian Rhapsody. Although the entire karaoke segment, I was just waiting for a knockout punch to Drew or a Glasgow kiss. 
oh well. Yeah. It was everyone, I think everyone was out there waiting for something to happen. Callum the writer, I had an awesome time at the watch party yesterday. Thanks for coming. And I had to leave before the after party because I never got my food and was starving. Uh-oh. Ouch. Shout out to the group. Uh, shout out the group pulled a chair up to next to. <laughs> really dislike the Drew lost. Liv's match was my favourite. Sad Ollie lost. We didn't technically lose. Yeah, I didn't even get a chance. Will Campbell. Hi, guys. Awesome show yesterday, though I wish Drew had won. Roman usually hits two spears. The one two-thirds into the match to start the final act and the surprise spear of doom that always ends it. Given Drew kicked out of both of them, he should probably have won. Uh, Compa Doom, that ending reeks of bad booking. How many times do we need to see Roman once again gets help at the last minute to win? At this point, I don't care about the story when the outcome is the same. Big L for Triple H for this choice. I have seen a lot of people say that, you know, when... um... Uh, Aaliyah and Raquel won the women's tag belt so I was like that's the first misstep of the Triple H mm. era I think m- people are probably evaluating this like no this really feels like the first big misstep and like and actually like Combat Doom's not wrong there that's the other side of things that people are, are sick of Roman's matches because they are always the same ending which is an Uso or a Heyman interferes and he wins it's the same problem that Britt had with her women's title run was this is the same finish to every match I, I hear what you're saying, but I look at the last two matches he's had and they've been some of my favourite of the year. Oh, the, I, I didn't like the Brock one. I, I, the, the, <sighs> spectacle the, one. Of, the spectacle of the tractor was great, but the match itself was actually really tedious by the end. Uh, Hman0199, here's the thing. They backed themselves, WWE, into a corner. If the match had been just for one title, then Drew would have 100% won. That way, Reigns is reign as Universal Champion and any potential future matchups would still feel extremely special. Um, I think you want to de-unify the titles later on. I think that would be weird. That would make it too predictable almost. Uh, and finally for now, Hawk the Outcast 823. Also, I just thought about this and need Luke's regal impression for the important bit. If Roman isn't going to be on Extreme Rules, might I suggest the Bloodline versus Drew KO and the New Day, or maybe Imperium versus the Brutes in War Games? Yeah, I don't see the main roster doing war games. Well, I I do. Yeah, the reason, Survivor Series or its own own show. I, I think you could do it at Survivor Series. Like the reason why Vince never did Survivor Series is because you have to set up two rings, and that's less seats to sell. And so he was just like, I, this doesn't make any business sense for me. It was also not his idea. And it was not his idea. Um, but I think Triple H is a guy who loves the concept so much. He you know built a whole thing around NXT with it. So I 100% see him doing it on the main roster. Um, But of course, yeah, it's a blood and... You think Triple H is going to do blood and guts? No, it'll just... (laughs) (laughs) The match beyond. Yeah. Uh, Right, before we get into our full play-by-play review of the show, thank you to our sponsor, Beer52. Beer52.com forward slash wrestle talk. Get yourselves eight... Eight free craft beers on us. You've just got to click the link in the video description down below and pay for that sweet ass postage of packaging. It is for our UK viewers only, apropos given that this is a UK pay per view. Um, thank you so much to Beer52 for sponsoring this podcast and la- excuse me, last night's uh, Clash at the Castle live reactions. And also a special thank you to Adam Pearson who gave me his celebrity master chef apron. Worn on TV. This has been close to Greg Wallace. (laughs) Are you telling me? Are you telling me? This has been real close to me. And John Tarot, who can't say pasta. Pasta. He says pasta. Mm. Because he's Australian. (laughs) But yeah, thank you so much, Adam. I I now have a MasterChef apron. Because I'll never get on Celebrity MasterChef. But MasterChef aren't the sponsors. Beer 52 are. They're a great service. They give you a little... Um, tasting notes magazine oh. of all the beers snack. and articles and recipes and stuff and the snack as well ferments is an award-winning magazine mm. it's that good and also the, the beers are great yeah so do please check it out it's it's free beer for you help support us and you know they've been sponsoring us for years we love them right so this show uh we missed the pre-show because bt didn't show it well yeah we were just assuming the pre-show would start at because B- six well bt said coverage starts at six so we all just assumed that's when the pre-show yeah. starts. No, the main show started at <laughs> six. The pre-show started at five, but BT was showing SmackDown. Uh, but of course, we're in our own little organizational bubble. We totally missed this. We only found out a minute on to go into going on air. And Bianca Belair comes out and me and Tempest are like, huh, 
I guess she's accompanying the Street Profits to the ring. <laughs> no. Oh, no, wait. It's the first match of the main card. Yeah, I was there. I saw Bianca, but I was like, huh, what a weird way to start the show with her <laughs> cutting a promo. Mm. And then I heard ding, ding, ding. The following is a six. Yeah. I was like, hey, what? We missed it. I got a text from Brandon because we had Brandon downstairs doing the, the tickets for everyone. I said, it's all right. You're only going to miss the pre-show. And I got a text message from him said, has the main show started? <laughs> I was like, yeah, sorry, man. Well, this was Mad Cat Moss and the Street Profits versus Austin Theory and Alpha Academy. Fun match. Six and a half minutes. Just a little thing to warm up the crowd, really. Montez Ford hit a blockbuster out of the top rope onto someone on the outside. Really, really good stuff. Uh, I actually haven't seen it. Uh, my prediction was going to be the baddies worked over one of the baby faces and then a couple of hot tags. Montez wins with a frog splash. There wasn't really enough time. It was just <laughs> It was just everyone did their spots. Mad Cat must look good. Yeah, it was a bit of work, heel working over spots, but yeah, it was mostly just the final third of the tag match. Everyone gets in, hits their moves. Well, I mean, the, the big talking point here is that Austin Theory officially got mm. his first name back. He is now once again Austin Theory. Much better. And a nice little thing having him there at the start of the show, just as a bit of Chekhov's gun foreshadowing. But yeah, the main card kicked off with Damage Control. So is that their name? Oh, is that? I, didn't, I, I don't know. That. That's what they were listed on as uh, uh, on Wikipedia. Are they really? But that's Wikipedia. That's fan edited. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go to WWE.com and see if what they've said. Uh, it's Bailey, Dakota Kai, and EO Sky. They took on Bianca Belair, Alexa Bliss, and Asuka. A uh, fun match. I, I just I just wasn't as into it as I could have been. Like the potential for this feud was really, really high. And I I they they botched the landing on the Raw Go Home show by not giving Sky and Kai the women's tag belts. This would have looked awesome if they were just there holding the tag belt, getting in Bliss and Asuka's faces, because then it gives all these four other people something to do around Bel Air and Bailey, obviously feuding for the title. But really, the story of this match was Damage Control are a functioning unit. They got rid of Asuka. They got rid of Bliss. All three of them ganged up on Bel Air. Bailey pinned Bianca. Uh, WWE.com just lists their names. So okay. uh, so I don't know. Um, however, like I thought this match did exactly what it needed to do. Because it was a, a match with six stars in it. And they all went in. They all did some big moves. Got the credit. It was like a perfect opening match. Hmm. Nothing too spectacular, nothing too mad, but a really good way to get it. Because this crowd were like hyped for it. And like the crowd that we had in the pub were also really into this because everyone was just excited for this show. So everyone was really into like the, the near falls and like the moves at the end. And I, Bailey pinned Bianca Belair. So that is Bailey pinning the Raw Moons Championship, presumably to set up the feud between the two of them over the title. And Again, I go back to what you just said then. It's an annoying that Sky and Kai aren't the women's tag mm -hmm. titles because they could have had those belts and then Bailey's going for the women's title and then all of the group have got gold. Yeah. It's been great. Yeah, there was a shot at the end when the control, whatever they're called, they were just standing there victorious over Belair. And I was like, God damn, you could have had them both holding the tag belts. Bailey could have hold, held up the women's belt. Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, so really this was... This could have been a great... This this was a good match with a, a mediocre story. But it could have been a good match with an excellent story. So yeah. that's uh, where I was a bit down on it. Um, what was I going... Oh, yeah. So the last time Bel Air was pinned... I was trying to find it. I was scrolling a lot through Cage Match. Unless she was pinned in a four-way, which I don't think she was. November last year. Really? That's how much they protect Bella. Now. Man, they really yeah. do. And they do a very good job of protecting her as well. Mm. So Bailey pinning Bella, not Asuka, not Bliss. You know, very obvious direction. Yeah. Bailey versus Bella. So that part was That's good. That's very good. Uh, then we got, oh my God, one of my three favorite matches on the show. This was my match of the night. Yeah. I loved all of this consensual violence. <laughs> Gunther versus Sheamus. Started with, you know, the Peaky Blinders coming down to the ring. And then it's uh, Kaiser. And the, the camera's on Kaiser on the little entrance ramp that they have. And he's doing his, you know, his introduction. And he said, and introducing... And it's Fabian Eichner, yeah. who is Giovanni Vinci. Giovanni something yeah. or other, yeah. I mean, everyone was like, oh my God, it's Fabian Eichner. And I actually thought they were just going to call him Fabian Eichner. That would have been nice. I, I rewatched some of the show today to kind of like hear the commentary. They're like, no, 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 he is called Giovanni. And I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. I like, he is, he's sticking with that gimmick, I guess. But he didn't, it's not like 
Kaiser said all this and then he walked out. The camera just like, <laughs> like moved back and he's He was always there. <laughs> I've been here practically the entire time you have. You know? And the, then and then out came Gunther. They look freaking awesome. And Kaiser announced themselves as Imperiums. Mm. This isn't just now a two-person act. This is Imperium as a faction on the main roster amazing to see this got a huge reaction for us in the joiner and worship and it was an incredible incredible scene i love the three of them and i, I said because me and adam were doing the live reactions i was like it just makes so much sense because now you can do six man tags which you couldn't have done previously but now you can yeah they uh so yeah someone mentioned this could be a possible survivor series war games feud it was it was nice seeing them at the start because they did the spot again where it's Gunther and Sheamus and they're just staring off at each other and all the seconds start fighting. I'm like, it's like Gangs of New York or or what's that video game? Not Grand Theft Auto, but it was all the gangs. Space Channel Five. No, I oh, Choo Choo Rockets. No, but they you know because they've got such ridiculous outfits, comic book outfits. Um Jamalami. No, none of, the those, none of those. It was it was just like fun, cartoonish gang warfare that I was still seriously into. Fortnite. Stop it. <laughs> but all the seconds are brawling. They're this wicked brawl. And all the time, Gunther and Seamus are just staring at each other in the ring. The camera keeps cutting back. Every time it cuts back to them, it gets more awesome. And then, of course, they respect the ring. They're waiting for the bell. And then it goes and they just start clobbering the sweat of each other's heads. This was beautiful, consensual oh. violence, and I loved every single second of it. We, uh, I think it was 2018, um, we voted uh, within the office Walter Wrestler of the Year. I think it was in 2018, because I'm pretty sure uh, Will Ospreay won the 2019 award. So he was our Wrestler of the Year in, in 2018, and we were like just absolutely in love with everything that he was doing, and we had this big thing. A lot of the comments were like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I do not see the appeal in Walter, this, that, and the other. And I, when people said that they don't really get Walter or, or Gunther, I'd be like, okay, look, I can name you five matches. Here are five matches that you should watch, and this will explain why I love Gunther matches. This match is in my five now of like matches to show people to be like, and this is why Gunther is one of my favorite wrestlers on the planet because I just love his style of match. Mm. And he is just an insane worker. And Seamus, like, this is the sort of match that Seamus gets such a boner for because he's just <laughs> like, I have been dying to do this match. Hit me more. Hit me harder. You didn't shot me hard enough. Just do it again. I've only got 17 welts. Yeah. I want 24. And he just, they knocked seven bells of cack out of each other. And it was so, so great. It's very much, you know, Suzuki is kind of at the tail end of his career now, but like Walter's style is very punishing on the body with the welts and stuff, but it's a, it's a lot safer than being dropped on your head. So yeah, hopefully you can carry this on forever. But they had so many good spots in this. Seamus kept on trying to do the... 10 beats of the Bowery. The ten, yeah. The, but brilliantly set up, getting up, out. Getting up, and then he would set it up onto the table and do it there, and Gold, Walter would get up. And they did it, in the end, about five times. Yeah. And they were got over more and more the more they did it. A few more slaps each time. So I think it got up to 15 on one session. Uh, but the this was, this was such a good story. It wasn't just two people beating the crap out of each other. We all know about Seamus's kind of... Well, maybe we don't know about Seamus's injuries, but it's not really an on-screen thing, but certainly part of his YouTube channel and like his career spine issues. And I think he was on purposely taking these power bombs from Gunther horribly on his lower back sort of glutes to to tell the story of when he went for that bro kick at the end, his back gives out and he falls over. He fell over, yeah. Amazing. What a great finish. Because I had Andy Datsun next to me going, oh, he botched that. I was like, did he though? And then when they did the second power bomb, and he to, he he landed in a similar weird way. Because usually when you land on a power bomb, if you're taking it to protect yourself, you know, you make your back as broad and large as possible. You spread that impact out on the upper back. But Seamus was taking it all on his lower back, on his lumbar spine part. Oh, and then yeah, but he still, even though he fell over and he couldn't do it anymore, he still like fought his way up, accepted his fate, and Gunther, another powerbomb, just a horrid clothesline 
to win. I loved this match mm. so, so much. So, so great. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had Liv Morgan, Shayna Baszler, which was which was the, the least best match of the night. Yeah, this was a, a blink and you'll miss it match. <clears throat> pretty all at like six, five, six I minutes. It still went 10 minutes. Did it really? It didn't feel like it went 10 minutes. You were um, just enjoying yourself. Maybe that maybe that's what it was. And like it's you know, they told the same sort of story they told with the the, the Ronda match, which is that Liv isn't as good as these and you know, she's the submission magician, all this sort of stuff. But actually yeah, you know, the crowd did really get into Liv locking in the triangle and locking in a, an arm breaker and stuff, maybe tapping her out that way. In the end, Liv won and it was perfectly fine. Eleven minutes. It was eleven minutes, was mm -hmm. it really? Evans. Maybe you enjoyed it a bit more than you thought. Shane no, well, no, this man's. Well, life. no, that's the problem. Is I, I can only tell you like three things that mm. happened in it, and yet it went on for eleven minutes. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm enjoying seeing Shayna back to what she used to be, but uh, yeah, live one again. Still doesn't look particularly strong. I don't really know what they're doing. It's, it's, it seems to be in a bit of a holding pattern until they do whatever they want to do with Ronda. Yeah, because Ronda was Ronda was supposed to be at this show, apparently, but then wasn't. And she had travel issues or something. After that, we got Edge and Rey Mysterio versus Judgment Day. Uh, this was a really fun tag match. A bit kind of goofy. It felt like it could have been the main event of Raw, of this new era of Raw, even with the star power. Like Damian Priest got uh, knocked over on the barricade, landed on his nads, and he was like, ooh. Get a big old, oh yeah, I mean, old cell. it would be the only comedy cell job of a nut shot <laughs> in this match. Hey, that wasn't comedy. That was that was betrayal at its best. No, I don't know, Edge, Edge's one was not. So they're having the match. I, it was a fun tag match, just a normal tag match, really. And it was perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. See how the standards have changed. <laughs> if this was if this was a tag match in the Vince era, it'd have been like match of the night. What a match! But now it's like no, no, we've got a higher standard. Thank you, WWE. Uh, so Dominic starts to sort of interfere, actually. Judgment Day weren't cheating, but Dominic sort of distracted the referee. Rhea Ripley starts to take him out. Mysterio dives onto both Rhea and Dom. That lets Edge run wild. Edge gets the win. And Edge, Rey Mysterio, they're celebrating. Dom's in the ring. and But he's lingering. And the hot, oh, everyone in our bar was just like, Oh my god, he's it's, it's gonna finally turn. gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Chance of hit your dad. Turn. I was gonna turn, say it started with turn. turn, turn, turn. And he kicked Edge right in the knob. And Edge did this big old sell of it and went to his knees. And then Ray was I like I thought it was a great sell job. And Ray was like, What are you doing? What are you doing this for? And then he attacked his dad, and this pl the place we were in erupted in yes chance for this turn. It was we just so pop of the night. I mean, I was in stitches yeah. over this. I thought this was the funniest thing on the show this turn because like it I, it didn't get any of the drama that it was supposed to get because I I even think like the live crowd there were like this is quite funny really. And then Ray to cap it all off just looked up and went why Dominic why? I was like this is soap opera nonsense and that's that that's yeah. kind of great. I really my my only criticism about this match because the match was fun. Um I thought Edge's mask was super stupid. Oh, uh, but it was a nice touch that he came out in a lucha mask. Well, yes, but it also looked like El Generico's mask. And I'm like, <laughs> there's only one man that should be doing that, my friend, and that's El Generico, and he's, you know, with his orphans. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the only other thing is like, man, like Judgment Day suck when they go up against Edge. Like yeah. it just it really highlights that Judgment Day made the wrong decision in kicking Edge out of the group because they can't beat him. And like this felt like the opportunity for them to get a win over Edge. Because the story of Edge's run with Judgment Day is that he always won because he had Judgment Day. Then he got kicked out of Judgment Day, and now he just keeps beating Judgment Day. Edge just always wins. Mm -hmm. And like Judgment Day can't buy a victory against this man. And it sort of makes them look a bit lame. And then they lost this match. Dom turns, and then Finn Balor's going like, ha, 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 ha. And I was like, yeah, but you just lost, mate. Like, I don't know what you're laughing about. Yeah, there's that shot of all three of them doing a, a goofy laugh. They, they do... Judgment Day do now feel just like peripheral setup B list Batman villains. Yeah, and uh, like if you're gonna do the if you're gonna do the Dominic turn, why not have Dominic cost them the match and give Judgment Day a win? And the only rationale I can have for it is that well, Bailey's heel group won. Yeah, Walter's heel group won. 
you'd have had the Liv one, but then you've had the heels win here, Seth the heel wins, and then Roman the heel wins as well. So it's like, well, we probably should have two baby faces win, I guess. So they gave the win to, but that like I Edge was changed it to Drew winning. Well, me too, yeah. but like you know, but Edge was like the most over person, like one of the most over people in the show, not named mm -hmm. Drew McIntyre. The reaction for it was incredible. Yeah, I, yeah, Judgment Day unfortunately do do suck quite hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I said they're the dark order of WWE. Yeah, with the purple and everything. Um, but I, yeah, it was a really fun moment. Uh, I just don't get Dominic's motivation. Like, why didn't he do it in the match? Why didn't he cost him? Is he with Judgment Day? Why did he turn on both Edge and Ray? I'll see where it goes, but I, I, I yeah, I'm struggling to see how they're going to make it work. Uh, after that, we had, well, our final match we'll be talking about, Seth Rollins and Matt Riddle, because we've already done the main event. What a beautifully short, focused card. How are you feeling about the 15-match oh card for All Out tonight? I don't know how I'm going to review it. Really, the, the, because we can't turn them around in time, I can at maximum write 2,000 words to review a show. That is just, it, if, I, if I do no intro... If I do no summary, I've got a hundred words per match on average. Yeah. That is um, like 30 seconds of talking time. And then you and Andy, I've got to do the podcast review of it in an hour. You've got to do the whole show, all 15 matches in an hour. Uh, I, was, I, I think it's a mistake. It's, it's, it's undisciplined is what it is. I, I'm... I've always said that I'm I don't like long shows. I don't like long anything really. Tell me a sex tape. And uh, just get in, get out. Tell me a sex tape. <laughs> I, it is does really annoy me. It's uh, funny. I actually kind of mentioned this in the the news episode that we're going out later. <laughs> like I, I feel that Tony's in a bit of a he's in a lose lose situation because one of the big criticisms that he gets is that he doesn't give enough TV time to some people. And then he wants to get everyone onto a pay-per-view card because he gets criticisms that people aren't given TV time. But then that means we get 15 match cards and then he gets criticized for having cards that are too mm. long. So like, I think he needs a way to satisfy both masters. And that really is cycling talent in and out. You just spend your three months focusing on this group of people and then you spend your next three months focusing on this group of people. Uh, but Rollins Riddle, I really, really liked. Uh, just seeing Seth Rollins come out as Dressed Elton as Elton John. John. <laughs> so good. Uh, because just before he was coming out, I was talking to James Pepper, the editor for No Rolls Bard, who does all the board game club stuff. And uh, we were both like saying, yeah, that 30-second that bit when Seth just dropped all the crap. No silly laugh, no goofy costumes. That's the Seth we like. And then out he comes dressed as Elton John in his flaming glory. And we're both like, oh, you know what, though? <laughs> <laughs> it this was great. It was great. Uh, but this match was, I, I loved it. This was like my third, all three matches I loved in different ways. I, it was really well worked. I, I believe the, the sort of blood feud intensity. But when Seth started doing Randy Orton spots, oh, my God. I, I was so outraged. I, got, I had such genuine heel heat against the heel, which I so rarely have. Um, yeah, I was very grateful for that. I think it's probably spot of the night is Seth realizing what he can do mm. and then hitting that draping DDT. And then Cog side of where it was like, and then wouldn't it be funny if I start doing the taunts <laughs> and everything? And I thought it was really, really good. Also, like Matt Riddle can sure as hell take a pedigree. Bloody hell. Yeah, and a stump. Yeah. I, th I think he just does it. Yeah. I think he just like nuts the ground. Yeah, it's not like the Kane pedigree where it's like, oh, I've got to take this on my knee. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, the guy never gets injured. <laughs> so the but when Seth started to use the Orton spots, I think he was trash talking him a bit. Riddle just lost his cool, went to get a chair, uh, went to hit Seth. Seth got out of the way. Referee didn't really do anything. But you're like, okay, Matt has detached from the rules of the match. He doesn't care about winning. He just wants to beat this guy now. But when he gets back in the ring, Seth is waiting. Stomp, super stomp. So it's not like, I, you know, when you beat someone like that, it's not a burial. It's it's almost, I had to do this to make sure because you're so tough. Yeah, and this was a, super, this was a second rope stomp. Mm. It was a really cool visual. So I I, I don't mind this finish. I, I, I was saying I wanted Riddle to win. Uh, what I wanted most is a continuation of the feud. 
I think they did enough. I think Riddle can say, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna keep my cool. Uh, so I'm gonna create an extreme rules style match. That's the reason why this match was so great. And that's mm. why the finish was so great as well. Like R Rollins was the right guy to win here. Cause I know some people like uh, there were, some people said to me like last night, I was like, man, Riddle looks like a chump because he just keeps getting beaten up by Seth Rollins. Like Rollins always stands tall over him. And I'm again, like he's cause he's getting the better of him. He's getting in his head. And like the reason why Rollins won on this match is because he got into Matt's head and talks Matt essentially out of winning the match by like, lost his cool, like lost it, got all frust like flustered and everything. And actually just sets up more babyface mm -hmm. fire for Matt Riddle to get that win over Seth Rollins. Yeah, I think it's, again, it's sort of those remnants of ill feeling from, well, understandably, like 40 years of Vince McMahon booking WWE. But now I think well, we really got a chance to focus on the positives. And I see this. This is classic wrestling multi-match storytelling yeah and actually it's nice to see cody get uh, sorry cody it's nice to get see seth get a win on pay-per-view yeah. yeah good point yeah seth needed a when you're looking at it, seth needed the win more um riddle gets the the receipt win in extreme rules match have uh a, a big match as a as the rubber match it's one of those matches where like it, yeah the rematch of the next pay-per-view isn't like a oh no what mm. more rematch it's not like no, the story facilitates more yeah. matches between these two yeah really good matches the three three matches i was like these are all my favorite i can't pick between them like four and a half stars and above for those three and that's 50 percent of the card great show i had just i'm biased because i had like the time of my life uh in the live reactions as well maybe i wouldn't maybe it was, they were only four and a quarter stars but it's, I put it down as my favorite show of the year. Yeah, I thought this was a tremendous show. Mm. Like, really, really great. And, like, re like, it is how you leave them, folks. And I think that's the only reason there is some sourness towards this. It's not just Drew not winning. It's all the stuff afterwards with Fury, like, that yeah. was just absolutely, like, hot garbage that, would, that shouldn't have been broadcast. Also, speaking of things that shouldn't have been broadcast, that lad's T-shirt. Oh, my God. That'll be cut from the network, I hope. Yeah. What, um, you know, like, I, I, I think people can make whatever jokes they want, by and large, and I don't get offended easily. But what a douchebag. <laughs> he, he made that T-shirt himself, yeah. and then he wore it to a wrestling show. And I'm pretty sure he was, wasn't he with his family? Like, he, Well, I mean, his whole thing was, I'm a better dad than Chris yeah. Benoit. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I thought that was a bit... What an asshole. <laughs> we, it did seem a bit of an asshole. Uh, but I, I think this was an incredible show. I am so curious to see what the follow-up is with Ro uh, Roman and Drew. Roman. With Roman and Drew. And I think that's... Whatever the follow-up is to the SD, Well, when I come to do my end-of-year awards, will really determine mm -hmm. where this sits for me. Like, is this right at the top, or is this going to get one of my two-point nominations? Mm -hmm. Or a three-point nomination? Or is this going to be the full five? It's going to be very, very interesting. But I think it was a cracking show. Uh, let's get into the Ultra Chats. We've had a bunch. WrestleTalk.com forward slash support for last cool bear. Tails P, out of time, so say goodbye. What was yours? Now is mine. This was the perfect time to take the belt from Roman. Then we could have had Drew versus Cross, Champa or Theory. Oh, excuse me. Also, Broken Dreams has a line about a metronome, which, unlike an hourglass, TikToks. Of course, a Saturn P reference. Mark Trayard. Hey, guys. God. My hangover's repeating on me. Got idea for Roman titles. Why not merge the titles to make a singular WWE Universal title? Now Solo is in the mix. Raw, SmackDown, and NXT can have world titles matches, and all Usos hold each one. <laughs> oh, dear. No. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Berg says, A great show with two electric crowds. It was a lot of fun, although I am a bit sad, and it is a selfish reason. I really wanted to get booed yesterday, but I understand if you couldn't do it, Ollie. Uh, you did say you'd try, but even if you didn't, it's okay. I did try, I was going to try and get everyone to boo, but the PA system wasn't hooked up to, so I couldn't make it you, you wouldn't have really heard it. No. And it would have been mad weird on the live reactions. Yeah. It wouldn't have gotten over. Richard Stevens. Hey guys, just wanted to say, had a blast at the watch along with you and the rest of the SWAF nation. I thought the premium live event was great. Highlight for me was the Gunther Sheamus match. Definitely match of the night. Also, random note. Glad you like the shoes. Ha ha. It was the shoes guy. This is the Navy guy, right? Yeah. Had these awesome. cracking shoes yeah. that lit up. Well, only one of them did. Yeah. <laughs> one of them are broken. Well, I he saw, told I... me 30 quid from Amazon. 
Really? I saw both of them light up at one point. Oh, okay. Uh, the Guilty Hat was there live. Funniest moment was my flatmate turning to me and saying, is he going to sing the full <laughs> song? American Pie goes on for seven minutes. I did think, and I turned to Rich and I was like, I wonder if he'll start doing the Weird Al version of it. <laughs> my, my, this here Anakin guy. Uh, Bizarre End was even more confused to hear it went out on the pay-per-view feed. Fun night, though, even with the end. Yeah, you must have thought if you were in that live audience, like, well, this isn't on the broadcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, F-Kick Crutch. First time Ultra Chatter. So it seems that all Trips is doing is letting them actually be wrestlers as the storytelling is still mostly crap. I was correct not to drink the Triple H loop aid to f- too fast like a ton of people have. I think it might be Kool-Aid, but um, yeah. I don't know. I think they're actually decent storytelling across the show as well. I, th- I think it's very decent storytelling. Uh, John Wright. This was the first non- non-WrestleMania, non-Royal Rumble WWE show I've seen in like eight, maybe ten years. Great show. Weird ending. Uh, got Lex Luger, Luger vibes, but had a blast watching the show and your live reactions. Now let's watch 12 hours of AEW. As a show that is going to start at like 1 a.m. here and it's going to end at half five. As a four and a half hour show. Five and a half with the pre-show. We're high at five and a half with the pre-show. Riot DR. Okay, who ordered their consensual violence with extra chops? Me, please. Uh, Gunther versus Sheamus was just everything I expected and needed from two big meaty men with big chests slapping meat. Also, Imperium versus Fight Night Brutes. I'm down for that. We need tag teams. Absolutely, we do. Mm. Uh, a hot tag to you. Um, Michael Abbott says, Hello, boys. Get out. I didn't get to make the watch along due to exhaustion. Do you think last night's PLE could be a feeler for taking WrestleMania abroad? Because of the small amounts I've seen, it looks like they went all out. I don't think so. Because you're going to draw a big crowd regardless of what brand name you attach to it. So generally, I I think it's a smarter business move to keep the big four slash five events in the States. I agree. I mean, But Trips did say yes. Like, we keep making the joke of like, oh yeah, in the next 30 years we'll, we'll do another watch long party. But Trips said, because this show has been a big success for them, though I did hear through the grapevine, they comped thousands of tickets. Oh, really? Like, when I say tens of thousands of tickets oh, were comped God. for the event. Um, but uh, Triple H is saying that it was a big success for them so that he wants to do more shows here in the UK. So maybe we'll see. They've not gone back to Australia. That's what I keep thinking. But yeah. that was a paid or show, Or India. Yeah. Uh, Hawk the Outcast said, What a show! Gunther versus Sheamus with their big meaty men bumping meat match. Don embracing the real Pappy <laughs> and turning on Ray just like him. The main event... Well, at least we have Imperium back. Love the show, guys. Keep up the great work. Uh, Danny G said, Hey, guys, just caught up this morning. Can't tell you how much I wish I could have been with you last night. I was just getting back from Vegas, and I couldn't make it work. Looked like a great night, and hope you can do another watch-along soon. Yeah, well, we, we had, honestly, like the... Um, I didn't I didn't realize how much I'd watched, missed watching stuff like that with everybody. Because it's been, it's, you know, the, the Thunderdome era. Two, three years of of sort of just doing stuff in house. But yeah, it was it was, it was wonderful. It was one of the, so fun. One of my favorite nights ever, I Je- think. It, for me too as well. Yeah. Like I had such a good time yeah. uh, with that show. Fluffy Udder said, I didn't see the show, but it's notable that the WWE highlights on YouTube is 15 minutes and two of them are a Cody recap video package. He wasn't even there, was he? Seems clear to me they want his return at the Rumble and then he can end the reign at WrestleMania. Good story. Uh, long way to get there. Robbie Clegg said, Hi guys, it was a great night last night watching it with you. Well, great meeting you, Ollie. I was the Scottish guy, but was such a good near fall in the uh, end. <laughs> Agree with you, but I'm hoping the follow up is good. But let's not just let's but let's just forget the last fifteen uh, the last five minutes. Very nice to meet you, Robbie. Uh, here's someone else who was at the show, the Decadane. Yes. Quick ultra chat to thank the Wrestle Talk team for putting on a great watch along event yesterday. The main event may have not gone the way we hoped, but an entertaining show. Gunther and Seamus being the show stealer now it's time to rest ahead of all out sweet monkey tuesday possible way of splitting the titles theory tries to cash in mid-match but gets pinned by the original challenger who thinks they've won both bolts but Heyman reveals that the money in the bank i think that's a well convoluted way to mm. ah but the contract really says yeah th- th- those title belts are just one title belt until I thought when Drew wins it, he'll be like, I just want to defend both these belts separately. I don't think they should be unified. Yeah, yeah. Like it needs to be a baby face decision to say like, no, I'm going to defend both of these belts separately as opposed to contractual loopholes. Or management forces the heel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Misha, who was also at the show yeah. last night, saying just a quick note to say thank you for the watch party. Definitely worth an extra star or adding 20% <laughs> to the score for the atmosphere. 
So I asked Tempest, Edge's 619 should be the 519 because that's the dialing code of Orangeville, which is Edge's hometown. That's a great idea. Right, DR. It finally happened. Dom Mysterio has betrayed his father. Nice clothesline following kicking Edge so hard in the nads. Dom's shoe came off. Motivation does seem to be jealousy over the attention of Daddy Ray. Raw should be fun. Is Ray a kayfabe <laughs> bad dad? You know the story Ray had to go into Dominic's school during the Eddie match to, to tell these teachers no, he's, this is all a storyline. <laughs> um, I, I must say, I thought Dom's heel facials and the the force he gave that clothesline with, um, I thought he did really well. I, I, I know you were down on it. I, I actually thought his... He looked like a, a really I've, pissed I, off I heel. I wasn't down on it. It was very funny. Yeah. I, I didn't get any drama from it. It was very funny. Also, you're probably like, why did he kick him in the... Why didn't he kick him in the balls? Eddie Guerrero, Batista, both turned on Ray with clotheslines too. So nice detail there. Yeah. Uh, also, I just I love any story where people think that wrestling storylines are real. It's like when Donald Trump called up uh, WWE after the Vince McMahon limo explosion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Find out well, what's going to happen with the business now that Vince is dead. <laughs> he became a president. Harvey says, hi, guys. I was lucky enough to be at the Clash last night. It's my first ever wrestling show. Hijacking the opening match, shameless ovation, giving reins to the traditional British welcomes will be great memories from a top night even though Drew didn't win. Uh, Riot DR has been a member for six months, said, my, my, this here Anakin guy, maybe Vader someday <laughs> later, but for now he's small fry. He left his home and kissed his mommy goodbye, singing, soon I'm gonna be a Jedi. <laughs> soon I'm gonna be a Jedi. You are awesome, jam that jam. And Renee Porter <laughs> said, not sure if you were being sarcastic, but Oasis were big in America in the 90s. Oh, okay. They're actually one of my favorite all-time bands. I That's thought you fantastic. were being sarcastic, because they did. No, I thought they famously never broke. No, no, they really did broke America. No, I like you know, like probably, just a couple of songs. Probably not like Spice Girls. Yeah, 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 Breaking yeah. America, but they did. They did find some audience in America. But he's in mainstream Ca breaking America. numbers. Oh yeah, you can't deny it. Can't deny Wonderwall. Well, thank you so much, everybody, and thank you even more to everyone who joined us last night. It was it was a truly special time. It's so great to meet every single one of you. Like, yeah. I was, I was overwhelmed. Oh, it was so great. Yeah, it was lovely yeah, chatting with everyone after the show as well and taking pictures, signing things. And it was just so nice meeting and chatting with you all and, and really like getting to know you on a sort mm -hmm. of personal level. It's amazing a lot of people coming up and be like telling you when they first started watching. Like we had someone come up to us and say they started watching us when they were 14 years old and they're now 20. Yeah. And they were like, you were with me during my GCSEs, my A-levels, my driving tests, and now at university. It genuinely was like an amazing, amazing mm. thing. I was like, wow, what, why were you watching us <laughs> <laughs> with all these T-shirts behind us? And yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. It was, it was genuinely one of the, the, the best times of my uh, last few years. It was great. It was really, really good. Thank you all so much. I mean, yeah, and uh, to answer everyone's question, we want to do another one. Mm. It's yeah. just by the way, like, but that started at six. <laughs> Actually started at five. <laughs> I should have been earlier. Regular WWE show started at one a.m. Yeah, different vibe when something starts at one a.m. So we'll, but, we'll yeah. figure it out. We'll, we'll we'll have a meeting in the next couple of weeks. Thank you all so much for watching. Also, big thank you to this episode sponsor, Beer52.com forward slash WrestleTalk. Get yourselves eight free craft beers on us using the link in the video description down below, or just typing into your URL bar, Beer52.com forward slash wrestle talk uk viewers only all you gotta do is pay for that sweet ass postage of packaging and you will get eight delicious craft beers an awesome snack and a magazine that oh. will tell you all about the beers that you have just been sent for free in the post uh but i've been ollie davis this has been luke owen please subscribe and jam that jam jam that jam